Hello everyone, today I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, R7500. And before I begin, I want to remind you that if you found this video helpful, please buy me a drink. Every pint of beer helps me in the creation of more valuable content for you. So the first thing that you will need to do is to turn on your router. Plug one end of the power adapter into an outlet and the other into the router. Then press the power button. When the router is turned on, the power indicator will be lit. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, plug the cable from your internet service provider or from your modem into a special port. This port is usually labeled as internet and usually it has a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it snaps into place. Now, you need to reset the router to the factory settings. Press and hold the reset button on the router for 10 seconds until the indicator lights on the router begin to flash. Sometimes, the button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will reboot and the settings will return to the factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable provided with the router into one of the LAN ports. And plug the other end of the cable into your computer's Ethernet port. Wait a few minutes for connection. Great, we've connected the router to your computer. Now, you will need to set it up. But first, let me show you another way to connect the router if you do not have an Ethernet cable or your computer does not have an Ethernet port. Connect the router to the power adapter and cable from your internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If your router is new and hasn't been set up, your Wi-Fi network will be named after the router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a sticker. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. First, open your web browser and type in the website address that you see on the screen. Use the URL bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning, click here. Then read Netgear terms and conditions and click I agree button. Now you must select no. I want to configure the internet connection myself. And click next button. And then click OK. If your router settings don't look like mine, it means your router has a different firmware. I recorded a video for each type of firmware. All links are in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The admin password is used to log into your router's web interface. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write the new password in the first field and then duplicate the password in the second field. Next, select two security questions and provide answers. Keep these, just in case you need to reset the admin password in the future. Click Next. The next page contains the information needed to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you want, you can print them out. Click Next button. If the router hasn't been updated in a while, the next page might initiate the firmware update. 
I recommend updating your device's firmware to the latest version available. It will take about 3 minutes for firmware update. Please, do not turn off the power or press reset button. If the new firmware is not available, just click OK. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website, where you can register your router. You can do it if you want to. I'm just going to close this window, because I'm not going to do that. Log into the router's web interface again, if you were logged out of it. Enter the standard username admin and password, that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. In the upper right corner, you can change the language of the web interface of the router. To access the internet, go to Advanced. Setup Wizard. Press No. I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. Select the internet settings on the next page. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. You can find all of this information in your internet service provider's contract. If your internet connection does not require a login, or you do not know whether it does, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Then in Internet IP Address section, choose Get Dynamically from ISP. In the DNS section, select Get Automatically from ISP as well. If your ISP only allows Internet access to a specific MAC address, you will need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer. If you're unsure about these settings, choose to use Default MAC Address. Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. In most of the cases, there is no need to clone the MAC address. However, I will show you how to clone your MAC address later in the video, if you can't get an internet connection, after the quick setup. Now you need to reboot the router. Go to Advanced. Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button. And click OK. After restarting your device, wait a few minutes and attempt to search for something on Google. If it doesn't work, check all the cables. They must be connected properly. Then log into the router control panel again. Go to Basic, Internet, and choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button, and then Reboot Router again. After a few minutes, Please check your internet connection. That's all. I want to remind you that if you found this video helpful, please buy me a coffee. Every pint of coffee helps me in the creation of more valuable content for you.